What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to G Myers World. And right now, we're going to be talking about how to take your team to the next level in about eight minutes. Now, when I say to the next level, you guys got to understand every time that you log into Madden, you're jeopardizing your mental health, right? Because the game is wild and savage. And if you really want to win, it, it's like one of those games where when you're winning, everything is good. It's like, yo, bro, uh, you know, the grass is green, whatever, you know what I'm saying? The air is fresh. As soon as you start losing, bro, it's dark clouds, you're in the Thor underworld, like it gets really nasty, right? So we have to continuously adjust because EA Sports continuously fine-tuning the game to kind of see exactly what they can do to kind of create balance. But at the same time, it's an imbalance because the game and the functionality doesn't work properly. So we have to figure out other ways to get stuff done. So one of the things that you guys have been asking, a lot of you guys have been coming in like, yo, G, what are you doing to kind of make sure that you're staying above the level of the game so that when EA does things like up escape artists and stuff like that, what, what is your next move? What, what are you doing, right? So what are we doing is this. This is what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to show you guys really quickly and briefly what we've updated, what we've changed, and kind of give you guys insight into it. Now, I showed you guys a very nasty scheme as far as having all these, um, you know, different abilities. We used to have Secure Protector. We've changed the linemen in the, uh, in the center and the right tackle and the left tackle now have Nasty Streak. I'm going to explain that to you guys in a second. We're still using the same post-ups because that's very important in the core. It's just a natural thing that allows things to go on uh, within the game. So, you know, I need you guys to kind of, you know, look at it and figure out what you want to do as far as using these, uh, you know, zero AP abilities with uh, Robert Hunt or the one AP ability uh, with the Backyard Ballers. I think that that's very important, right? So this is adding a dimension to the game where my opponent now has to worry about the run game, but my full objective is to pretty much pass with my tight ends, Darren Waller and Kyle Dig Out Your Girls Pits. All right, so let's get over to the um, the reasoning behind why we're switching between Secure Protector and Nasty Streak. Now, there was a time in Madden 20 where Nasty Streak was similar to Escape Artist. What do I mean by that? It was extremely, extremely OP, and dudes were just getting pancaked, no IHOP on a regular, regular basis. It was just disgusting, right? Since then, it's been tuned, but they will pancake on different occasions depending on how you have it set up. Now, the Secure Protector, just to keep in mind, like I want you guys to keep this in mind, the Secure Protector will continuously slow down certain things that are going on. So you can still utilize it if you would like, right? But if you're geared up and trying to make your opponent be off, like he won't really know what you're trying to do type thing, I would rather you guys use Nasty Street because if you decide to make it a running game, you're going to annoy that person very, very, yo, know, it's going to be a lot. They're going to be very, very annoyed and they will not be able to tolerate a lot of things that's going on. Secure Protector, although sometimes we think it works in the run game, it's not really a definitive uh, way to run the ball. But Nasty Streak, you'll actually see the players go out there and grab onto somebody and do something. So we've changed it. We said, you know what? We pass the ball a lot, but what happens if I want to run a draw? What happens if I want to run a trap? What happens if I want to run a counter? I want more, you know, run blocking, which is why you use that. Now, as far as the players actually blitzing in and affecting what you're doing, that's going to go based back on the attributes and the strength and stuff like that. I would love to have this guy at 99 strength because a full O-line of 99 strength, as we discovered earlier, I believe I was the first person to do it. I don't know. Uh, pretty much a lot of guys came here like, yo, good look. The 99 strength means something, and we figured it out. Well, I figured it out during, uh, during the most feared promo. When, when dudes came out with the jacked up O-line, it's almost impossible to do anything when the O-linemen are so strong and big up front. So regardless of whatever you put on them, if you want to stay with the secure protector and you want to, you know, use that for running pass, it's fine. But this puts your opponent in a situation where it's like, yo, dude, I'm in for a hell game. Like once they see three nasty streaks, they're in for a hell game. Because if you start running the game, running the ball out of passing formations, it's almost impossible to deal with. Now, your outside receiver should have a, you know, a catching ability. I prefer deep out because deep out is going to cheat your opponent into the point where he's just like, look, you know what? I don't want to do this no more. Like this right here, I didn't sign up for this. You know what I'm saying? Like it is what it is. And um, I'm going to tell you guys right now, regardless of however uh, you're approaching the game, you need, you need these abilities. You know what I'm saying? Like you can do it without it. Like you could go escape artists or run around like an idiot and just throw the, but if you want to make sure that your opponent realizes that you don't care about him, you're going to want to make sure that you're running uh, deep out on both the outside guys. So he and um, 
Kyle Pitts, both have deep out. They're my outside uh, receivers. And yes, tight ends can play wide receiver. All right, you know, halfbacks can be fullback. It's just that fullbacks can't be wide receivers. The fullback you can put in at the tight end position as well. I've been getting those questions. That's, you know, typically the way that it works. Now, why is Ryan Fitzpatrick on my team and why am I tolerating him? Although he sucks. Let's go ahead and break down what's happening, right? He gets to a 97 throw power, 88 speed is not that bad. And when you look at the abilities that I have, the sideline dead eye, right? You have the identifier, which is so key. Like this is something that I don't think I'm gonna go away from anymore. I used to be really, really big on identifier. I went away from it for a while because of AP, but it's really good to know where your opponent is. Because if you wanna seam street the breaks off of them, you wanna know where they are. And that's what I do. I pretty much watch where they are a lot because it's, it's a certain spacing where they can't get back to where the ball's being thrown. And you wanna know what side of the field to attack. So identifier is great for one AP, the hot route master obviously, and then he gets pass elite, pass lead elite for one. So this is gonna change your game and take it to the next level simply because you're not utilizing your AP on a quarterback that's taking so much of it. You're spreading the wealth and you're trying to see exactly what's going on as an overall you know, aspect of the game. And that's very, very important. Now, leapfrog is a very, very important ability. It's another thing that I went away from. This has lit literally been OP all year. I know you see a lot of people using it now and it's regular, but this is because you can't fumble. You know, you're not, you just leap around like an idiot. You're not going to fumble the ball. So it's a really, really good ability to have. And again, when you have all these big time quarterbacks that don't give you an advantage with AP, you're hurting yourself. You know what I'm saying? So it becomes a little bit more difficult and kind of like looking at me type action and you don't want that. So you want to have the players that have an advantage when they get the ball, no matter where they're getting the ball at. And Leapfrog is just absolutely 100% uh, huge. And then finally, the interior guys, I used to be, uh, you know, based on the way the AP was against using Route Tech, but Vern gets it for one. So it's a no brainer. And he's a very, very fast tight end. And if you have a Niner theme team, uh, you know, you're, you're in the money, bro. You got a lot of what it takes to be a star. And also, when you guys get to about, I would say, 71.3 likes on this video, I'm going to drop another video talking about some of the things that you guys have been requesting uh, with theme teams. So that's going to be on you guys. One of you guys will write it in the comments. 73.3 likes. All right. Not every video is going to tell you the like amount, but you guys can determine it as well in the comments. And if I like your average of likes, I'll go ahead and pin it to the video so you guys can know what we're looking for for the likes. So I'm gonna leave it to some of my regulars to go ahead and start putting those numbers out on every video and I'll like and pin it and it'll be your job to go ahead and get that done. But this being one is extremely huge because he's just gonna get open. You can't play man against him. There is no man coverage action. And then obviously you gotta have more than one, which is why we give it to Jerito Rice and he just gets open and nobody knows why. So this right here is gonna take your offense to another dimension. It's gonna take your game someplace that it hasn't been. And if you continue to watch, you're just going to get better. I'm going to see you guys and girls next time you enjoy your day. Until next time, one love, y'all.